Hi, everyone. I wanted to remind you of a must read. This is a book that you have to have on your bookshelf. It is called The Necktie and the Jaguar by Carl Greer. He is able to help you make important decisions, give you some guidance on which path to take, and you get to learn how he tapped into the wisdom and power of the unseen worlds for guidance and inspiration. I had the opportunity to interview him, and he was a lovely guest on the Path 11 podcast, episode 343. Check it out. Listen to the podcast. Go buy the book. Again, it's The Necktie and the Jaguar by Carl Greer. To find out more information, go to his website, carlgreer.com. That's spelled C-A-R-L-G-R-E-E-R.com. Hi, and thanks for tuning in to the Path 11 Podcast. I am your host, April Hanna. At the Path 11 Podcast, we are here trying to deliver leading-edge research on consciousness, healing, and metaphysics. And just like you, we are trying to answer the big questions about life. Who are we? Why are we here? And what is our purpose? We hope by listening to our podcast, it will make each day you live on Earth a little easier to understand. And now for today's podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Path 11 Podcast today. I am very excited because I've met a new person, and actually she became one of my teachers more recently. I've been trying to find fellow podcasters that I can bring on Pap 11 Podcast who have really great content, who are making changes in the world, and introducing you to other people's stuff. And I came across Molly Mandelberg, and I just recently took her piece with money five-week course, and it was so much fun. So we're probably going to talk a little bit about that. I also found out in that class that she's a huge jam band fan. So for those of you who are watching on Path 11 TV, I dressed up for her and I'm wearing my Twiddle jam band shirt because I just recently got into the jam band scene maybe about five years ago and I'm just hooked. And and we're just going to talk about a lot of great stuff today. Molly is the founder of Wild Hearts Rise Up, creator of Magnetic Influencer Collective, and also the writer and illustrator of the Wild Hearts Rise Up Oracle Deck. I'm not sure if she has that deck with her today, but we'll see. She's the host of Bull Tactical Magic podcast, which I was very honored to be a guest on, and Reveal the Game of Life podcast. She really works a lot with business entrepreneurs and helps them with coaching. She's also certified in NLP. She does transformational leadership coaching, and she lives out of a van full time, which is like so cool. I love her. So we're going to just have a really fun show today. Molly. Welcome to the Path 11 podcast. Thank you so much for having me and for that warm, beautiful introduction. Yes, you're welcome. So a couple of things before we kind of get into a little bit of learning more who you are. I have to give you a couple compliments because, you know, I just took your piece with money class. It was five weeks, an hour long. And I was it was just so refreshing to have such a great teacher who is so organized, respects time <laughs> and pack so much into an hour. And I just, that's kind of like the way that I teach my classes. And I've recently have taken a couple of courses from other people. And it was like so triggering for me because like they'd show up late. It'd be like 15 minutes late. One teacher decided that he was going to play his guitar for like 20 minutes before he started class through Zoom. We're listening to us. I'm like, what the hell's going on? They always kept us late. So I just love someone who is so organized and respectful of time. And you gave us so much in these calls. I mean, we were meditating, we were journaling, we were sharing, you were teaching us techniques. So I just want to put that out there for our listeners, because Molly is my kind of teacher, okay? She just gets the job done. She's very respectful of time. She starts on time. She ends on time. You know, it's not like you have to be worried that you're going to be running late because she's running over late. So just phenomenal teaching. And I really respect that. So thank you for being a great teacher. (laughs) Thank you so much. And I'm sorry you had bad experiences with other people. That sounds awful. I very much appreciate when people honor time too, because time is important. Yeah, it is. And, you know, it's been a while since I've been a student, right? Because I teach a lot of my own classes. And this year, I really wanted to be more of a student. So it's, it was interesting, like in this one really long, like it was like 21 week class that I took, It also made me look at why I was being triggered about this time thing, right? And some of it is my inflexibility, (laughs) you know? So it's like, 
this, you know, teacher was just kind of more laid back and relaxed and didn't even apologize for being late. And I was just like, I would like show up to class sometimes so angry. And I'm like, okay, what's this triggering within me? Right. Cause it's never really about the other person. It's yeah. about us. So I was really had to work on my flexibility and be more like water thing as opposed to just like, you know, kind of like that, that part of me that really likes to be organized. So yeah, sometimes, you know, stuff like that will, when we show up to ourselves and kind of look at what's triggering us, it can help us heal. So I think I healed some stuff, even that really bad experience. And good job on you for looking at what that was there to teach you. Cause that's a hard yeah. place in and of itself. Yeah. And, you know, you are so insightful and you share so many great stories, too, with your own, you know, teachings. And, you know, when I learned that you were kind of living on the road and just kind of like living the life and making your dream happening and, you know, having a very successful entrepreneurial business, you know, of six figures, I was like, wow. Well, one one term that I learned from you is I'll have what she's having. It's kind of a, I wanted to bring you on to hear a little bit more about your story and your background, because I know from what you shared with me a little bit in getting to know each other on your podcast, that you were really brought up in a very open household. It sounded like your mom was very intuitive. She read the Akashic Records, you know, Law of Attraction. So all of this stuff was like really put into your program in early childhood, which is pretty cool. So tell us a little bit more about your story. Yeah. So yeah, my mom's pretty far out on the woo end of the spectrum. She was raised Nazarene and then found her way to her own version of spirituality. Definitely was channeling the Akashic record before I was born and when I was a little baby. And so when I was asking questions about, you know, what's going on here? How does this world work? What's what's really happening with these, you know, bodies and beings and being on earth? I was getting a lot of like pretty far out answers as a kid. So I grew up believing in past lives. I grew up believing in, you know, the being lives on beyond the body and that there is, you know, there are other dimensions and stuff that we can tap into and there's higher consciousness to be aware of. And so when I was about, I don't know, mid 20s, I had been reading all these books about really I latched on the idea of past life regression as a way to heal. And Brian Weiss, Dr. Brian Weiss has written a bunch of books. The first one that I read was Many Lives, Many Masters. And then I ended up reading all of his books that he had written up until that time. And in one of them, I believe it's called Miracles Happen. He actually talks about all the miracles that come from his five-day retreat. And I kind of latched onto this idea. I read that book and I resonated with it so deeply that I just knew I had to be at that retreat. I didn't know what that would mean for me. I didn't know how that was going to go. I didn't know if that I was choosing a career path at that moment. I just knew that I had to go there. I had to do that. I had to be in that room. And so I got myself on the wait list. Some miracles occurred to get me off the wait list and into the next retreat. I was not someone who had money laying around for flights or for thousand dollar workshops at the time. So the fact that I made it there and the fact that I paid for it in advance was kind of miraculous in and of itself. And when I was in the room, I was actually really frustrated with the teaching style, to be honest, now that you've brought that up. (laughs) I was, I had already read all his books and people were taking up so much of the class asking what, in my opinion, were dumb questions. Like people who had clearly not read any of his books were showing up to this workshop, just uninformed and wasting all of our time. And I was upset for half the time. And that was definitely there to teach me, teach me patience, teach me to listen. If something's coming up, it's probably coming up for me again as well. And I was a smoker, a cigarette smoker at the time. And I realized I was in a room full of hypnotists and healers. And I ended up pulling this wonderful woman, Ruby, aside, who had the name of my great grandmother, by, by the way. And asking her if she would just do a hypno session on me for smoking cessation. And she said, of course, she did an hour session and then another half hour session the next day. I quit smoking and that lasted for many years. It didn't last forever, but that was my own choice later on. But I felt like she had saved my life. And I was learning these past life regression skills. And I was having big ah ahas about my own life, my own relationships, my partner at the time. We'll call him a boyfriend. He wasn't much of a partner at the time. And I had just a dramatic change in my life. Like learning this new modality in addition to having this physical like addiction change. I went back to California. It was in upstate New York at Omega Institute. I went back to California 
And I knew I wanted to keep exploring this. And at the time I was living in this tiny apartment with my boyfriend. It was like 350 square feet, very small. I knew I couldn't practice this new modality there. So I had to find a place to do it. And on one of my daily walks, I happened upon this office. I was like, perfect. And in that interim time between thinking I want a place to study or practice and finding that office, I had decided to do a deep, intensive hypnosis training so that I had the induction skills to be able to go to past life regression places. So when I found this office, I it was another clear sign. It was the same way when I read that book, I had this resonance. I knew that something in this book was for me. I need to go to this place and feel it out. When I walked into this office, I had this awareness that this is a place where some of my life's work will be done. I just knew it. I had this like clear alignment of like, yes, this, this now, choose it. And so then within the span of 10 days of seeing that office, I signed the lease. I registered my business. I got insurance. I, my graphic designer boyfriend made me a logo. I built business cards. I built a website. All of this popped into existence in the span of like 10 days. So when other people are like, I'm starting a business and they go into it with this big plan. I accidentally started my business just because I wanted insurance. And in order to get insurance, I needed all these other things to fall into place. So that's how I got started. And since then, my, my reality has shifted away from hypnosis as a modality. I know I talk about hypnosis on podcasts and people are like, oh, I want to try that. That's not really what I do anymore. My journey has evolved. I, end up, I ended up realizing that I had a capacity for sort of translating the wisdom and the magic of healing into copy and content for marketing a business. And so I'm now this sort of bridge between worlds of the healers who are beautiful and magical and wonderful at what they do. And they suck at talking about what they do and they suck at using technology because they're so far out there. And I help them synthesize the like amazing robots and technology that we have access to nowadays to make running their business smoother and to make broadcasting their message easier so that they can build a global movement. And so that's sort of, I, I found this gap that I am really skilled at filling and that's when my business took off. When my business took off, I realized I didn't want to be working in an office anymore. I could choose where I wanted to live. And I had been nomadic for about eight or nine years when I started my business. And so it was time to get back on the road, in my opinion. So for me, it looked like building an apartment inside of a Sprinter van. And I've been living in that full time for the last three and a half years. Wow. And what do you think that is about, you know, traveling, being nomadic, you know, wanting to just be on the road? Is that connected to a past life of yours, do you think? Oh, or is sure. it just... Yeah, I'm sure it is. I'm sure I've been an explorer and a nomad in many lives. At first, when I was younger, when I was in my 20s and I was, you know, heavily, you know, drinking and partying and I was escaping, I was r refusing to be responsible for anything. I didn't want to have a dead end job. I didn't want to have relationships that didn't fulfill me. And I was running from a sense of responsibility. And I feel like as I've grown and evolved, my nomadicism, my travel, my vagabondishness has evolved to be more about connecting and less about running from connection. So it's like I get to dig deeper into my relationships because I'm actually going and being in the lives of my loved ones. And I get to, yeah, I get to focus on my own passions more because I get to just be alone when I want to be alone. I get to be in community when I want to be in community. And both of those feel like much more like running towards something than I used to feel like running away from something. Yeah. And what is it like, you know, to live, to live in the van and to be free of so many, I guess, physical possessions, you know, is of you have basically what you need, you know, yeah. and it's not like you're probably spending money on, you know, flat screen TVs or curtains or this. I mean, clearly, I'm sure you decorate, you know, your van and you have great pictures of it on Instagram. But what, you know, if people are kind of thinking about wanting to do that and having a really hard time of letting go of their house or the objects that they owned, I mean, can you talk just more about your process with that and what that feels like? Yeah. So I have been nomadic for most of the last 13 years. So I haven't collected a lot of furniture the way that other people have. And I will say that m m the majority of people I know who move into a van or who try to travel more freely like this, they go down in phases. So at first I had a lot of stuff still stored at my mother's house. 
And as I started leaving, she has a big garage, which is lots of space for my stuff. As I started leaving and coming back, I'd be gone for seven, eight months at a time before I came back to visit. And I started realizing like, if I don't use this stuff, if I don't need it, if I don't, if it doesn't bring me joy, like Marie Kondo tells us, then why is it still being stored here? So I would slowly start getting rid of like the couch that I loved from college that no mouse or mice were starting to eat. I don't need to keep that anymore. It's been sort of an ongoing process of downsizing, of realizing, you know, if this art I've been saving isn't going to go on my walls of my house someday that I might want to buy, then why am I still storing it? Why am I still keeping it here? It, it can go. And like slowly over time, I'd say once a year, I go back to my mom's and clear out some of the stuff that I've been storing there. And I know a lot of other van lifers who have storage units somewhere who have a friend with some garage space that they use to keep the stuff that they just couldn't quite get rid of yet. And I think most of us, when we end up going back to that pile, find that there are things that just don't bring us joy. Yeah. And I do sometimes, I will say, I bought a toy this last week that I haven't bought something frivolous like this for myself in a long time, but I bought a stand-up paddleboard that's inflatable and barely fits in the garage area of my van. But I've already used it four times in the first week that I've owned it. So it's absolutely a good purchase. I think I spend more time thinking about whether or not I'm going to purchase something because I know it's going to have to fit in the van. I'm going to have to move it around a bunch to get around to other things in the van. So I'm a little bit more conscious and aware of like, do I actually need this? Do I actually want this? The biggest downside to living in a van is that I'm an artist and that I love art. And so I find I don't buy art that I love as much because I don't have walls to put it on. But someday I, I aspire to build a retreat center on a big piece of property someday. So I know there will be walls again in my future. There will be. OK, yeah, I was going to ask you that, you know, if you feel like this traveling is going to be for a period of time and then eventually you're going to, you know, settle in when when you get that calling. Yeah, I think I still will travel though because I a hate winter and b I'm just so happy when I'm on the road I've slowed down a little bit the last few months I fell in love with a guy in California who lives in a house I'm actually in his <laughs> bedroom office right now so that's why you don't see the van behind me but I knew that was going to be what happened someday I was going to fall in love with somebody and that was going to slow my my traveling down a little bit but for example last week I just drove out to Colorado for the week and had an amazing time and just felt more connected to myself and who I am. And that's why I have to keep traveling because there's a part of me that comes alive when I'm on the road that just isn't the same when I'm staying put somewhere. Yeah. And your trip to Colorado was to Red Rocks, right? To yeah. see one of your favorite bands. What's I, your favorite band? My favorite band is the String Cheese Incident. I saw them actually five times last week because they played Green <laughs> Fifth Red Rocks and two nights. I, I love, love it for that. Awesome. Love it. I have been to Red Rocks before. Actually kind of went through this period in my life too, where I was really struggling with relationships. I've been married and divorced and married and divorced. And I was like, I am dating myself. Like what the hell is going on in my life, you know? And I had always wanted to go out to Colorado and I'm a huge live music junkie. So, I mean, it just fills me. I, you know, everyone knows I'll be their concert buddy. Anytime there's live music, I'll go. Now that the world is opening up, I'm like, at concerts left to right. Right now, my obsession is Billy Strings. Nice. If you've ever heard of him. Yeah, I'd love it. If you haven't, he's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I ended up going to Colorado because I took really almost a full two years and just dated myself and said, you know, anything that I could do with a life partner, I'm going to do here and where do I want to go? And Colorado was one of my bucket lists. So I went and saw a football game there, the Broncos, when Peyton Manning was still playing. I saw 21 Pilots. I didn't even know who they were, but I needed a concert at Red Rocks because that was in my bucket list. And it happened to be 21 Pilots. And I fell in love with them. And I went to Breckenridge, Colorado Springs, I mean, all over. And I would say I come alive, too, when I travel, which is, you know, why it's so much fun to kind of live vicariously through you and your Instagram page and just see how you're doing it and stuff, because I have a feeling, you know, I may want to take like a full year off and do that, you know, just kind of get on the road, save enough money because now I have peace with money after your class That's nice. and, you know, and just just kind of get out there and just feel that freedom. You know, COVID, I think for a lot of people, at least for me, made me step back and say, OK, what is it that I have been saying that I want to do my whole life? And then I haven't actually have done it. You know, it kind of really refined some of the things 
to make me realize like, hey, life is short. Let's go. You know, let's just do it. Let's not think about it. Let's do it. So, yeah. So Red Rocks, I have fond memories there. Red Rocks. I got I was so excited when we were on our call and you were like, yeah, I just hopped in my fan and drove to Colorado to go see a show. And I was excited that somebody had asked you because I just, like I said, got introduced to the jam band scene. Many years ago, I dated a guy in the music industry and got to see a bunch of you know, live, live shows backstage, you know, meeting some bands. And I was introduced to the Twiddle band, the band Twiddle, which then led me to Goose and Fish and Grateful Dead and, you know, all that good stuff. And String Cheese incident. They're usually on my Pandora playlist when I, you know, choose any of those jam bands. So yeah, music just uh, fills me as I'm sure it fills you too. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit more too about just kind of like the courses that you offer, because you mentioned, you know, you're working with healers and you have us totally pegged and nailed, right? Because another part of my business outside of Path Lover Productions is that's what I do. I'm an energy healer. I was a mental health therapist, as you know, kind of blending the two, but really moving more into the aspect, you know, of my services. And I am a horrible salesperson. I have, I think, an, an innate ability of knowing how to market myself on like a local level, but not a global level. And with Path Love and Productions, like Mike is the technical guru because you're right. Like we're just so high up and like just can't even figure out <laughs> electronics and technology and like what's the best thing. So having somebody like you to help people like me is just amazing. So how do you kind of, you know, teach healers or work with them to really monetize their business and help them to basically just kind of get organized so that they can actually package their product so people can really see what they're doing because I have struggled in that myself. It's just like, and I find, I don't know if you find this with your clients, but so much of my energy goes into the sessions with clients that I don't even necessarily have the headspace to go into that creativity to think about what's the best title for my next class or how do I even blog about this or how do I write a good post on, you know, Facebook? I'm just like, here's my class, take it. <laughs> so yes, I don't know if you find that with healers, but how do you help people like me? Yeah, totally. So one of the main ways is what you just touched on, which is when you're doing your great work and you're focusing so hard on serving your one-on-one -on -one clients, when do you even have time to think about the program or think about the leveraging of your business or to bother to set up some sort of process to make that easier moving forward. There isn't going to be time for it unless you make time for it. And sort of that's one of the main reasons people work with me is to have this designated time to now focus on something they wouldn't have kept themselves accountable to focus on otherwise, because it's superfluous when you're running a one on one business. Going to leverage your business is like an added project. It's an, a, a superfluous task. And so it's not going to get done unless you really carve out time for it. And it's also not going to get done unless you know how to do it because we put ourselves into, I don't know how to do it. So I won't for a very long time. So number one, it's getting the time, the accountability, the support to actually even consider doing a bigger task like that. And then it's, what do we need to set up? So two people could be running the exact same business. They could be both doing the exact same modality, serving the exact same clientele. And their business models would look entirely different because those two people have different sets of strengths. They have different desires. They have different visions for their future. And so I don't teach a one size fits all cookie cutter way of doing anything. I help my clients one, when I'm working one on one with them to individually figure out what that business model is going to look like and to set up every piece of the puzzle, whether that's content, whether that's energetically getting into alignment with who they want to be and allowing themselves to be visible and show up in that way or receive that piece of money that they want to be having, or to actually put the program or the course together and launch it out into the world. So I basically teach the same stuff um, across the board, but I have the home study version of doing it. I have the group program versions of doing it. And then I have the one-on-one -on -one services to help people do it. And mainly what I'm helping people do is figure out email marketing, consistently showing up on different channels, whether that's social media or whether that's making a podcast or a YouTube channel, some sort of media outlet where they can be broadcasting and then creating the offerings so that people can come in the door and actually buy something from you. So whether that's a home study course, an online group program that's run live or some bigger mastermind kind of project helping them figure out what that's going to be, how that's going to be run 
and then using as much technology as possible to automate that process. One thing I realized is uh, when somebody sets something up that you have to manually fulfill on, you're much less likely to promote that because you have this knowing that the more people know about this, the more work it's going to be for me. So what kind of technology can we use to set up so that, you know, when someone registers for that course, the money goes straight into your bank account, the email they need to receive goes straight out to them and the content they want to dive into is immediately accessible. So how can we automate so much of it that you're not doing more work when more money comes in? You're allowed to just promote this thing that you've created and the rest of it is a streamlined process that you've set up to work for you. And that makes it so much easier to want to market yourself because it's like, great, come in the door. Like 103 people signed up for Peace With Money this past month. And it was like, awesome. That's not more work for me. I'm doing the same amount of work. You guys can all just come in because it's set up. And I know that you're going to get the right emails at the right time. And I know that you're going to be able to show up to this live call when we're doing it because I've set it up to do that for me. And I get to just show up and do my magic trick when people arrive on the call. And that's so spacious. That means I can drive to Colorado and not worry about it and just do a call from the van because all the rest of the details have been ironed out. So I hope people do that. Find more freedom through running your business. Have more time to actually focus on the facilitation and the magic of the work that you do because everything else has been handled. And once you set up one thing like that, I now have, I think, six or seven courses because once you set one up, it's really just a duplication process. You've set up that email sequence, now duplicate it and edit it to be the right thing. You set up that course, now duplicate it and edit it to be the new thing. And yeah, so that it makes it easier to continue leveraging your business once you set one thing upright also. Yeah, it, it reminds me of the saying, work smart, not hard. What? You know, it's kind of like and and something like that, because that's I, I know I'm going to be doing some one on one consulting with you because this is like exactly what I'm looking for. Just even going to your website and having the experience of like, OK, I registered for this, you know, and you gave a free offering. Actually, I was one of the lucky ones that got in because when we were getting ready to do the podcast on Tactical Magic, you're like, oh, I, I got a download that I have to offer this for 100 people for free. And I'm like, OK, count me in, you know, and I ended up taking it for free. But it's like, oh, this is so cool. I love this little portal that she has. And, you know, so many other people I've seen have these portals and you register and then you're on the back end and you can access all of your stuff, the recordings. I'm like, all right, I've got to figure out what are these programs and how do you set this up? And and then I think about it and I'm like, oh, that's too much research. It's going to take like three hours, two hours of my time. So coming to somebody like you who already has it figured out, you know, we can do some consulting. You can say, okay, well, this is what you need to get. This is how it works. This is, um, you know, what the vision looks like. Because I have so many courses that I have taught over my career. And just thinking about what you're talking about, the fact that I could like upload all of this stuff and have people, you know, go into it. And like you said, you just show up for your Zoom meetings and yeah. there you go. And the computer program does the rest. Amazing. Yeah. I'm so excited. I'm excited to continue yeah. to work with you. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Keep an eye out for April's Path 11 products coming soon. <laughs> That's right. Courtesy of Molly. Yeah. So I just, I was just curious to know, just because I just finished the five week course with peace and money and there were so many money miracles that happened in five weeks. And it was really, I mean, very simple takeaways, just even sitting with what peace of money feels like shifted my whole paradigm, you know, That's the thing. So yeah, everything else seems just like, I was just like piling things on to make it longer. I mean, to <laughs> fill out the other hours, but really the peace with money practice is simple and I'm happy to give it away to your listeners. Just spend a moment a day tapping into what peace with money would feel like in your life. And that will start to bring peace with money into your life. It's really simple. So simple, but it's so true. And so I've been walking around, you know, for the five weeks since we've been doing it, money miracles are happening. Opportunities showed up. I was just like, oh my gosh, you know, this is wild and crazy. And I, and I think, you know, the beauty in it for people like you and people like me is that the magic happens because you are holding the space for people to do that. You know, it's not like it's anything fancy. Nothing fancy really happened in five weeks, but you showed up to people. You created the space. You held it for people. Now, if if I 
read a book and said, okay, I'm going to do this for five weeks on my own, I probably would not have followed through. But the fact that I knew I had to show up at this Zoom class, you know, every week, you know, we're taking three minutes, you know, throughout the hour here and there of doing journaling, I probably wouldn't have journaled on my own. You know, I'm sure so many people would say that. It's just like, so I also think, you know, people like us, the beauty in what we do and what we get paid to do is to hold space for people because people need that space. They need that accountability, which is really awesome. Now, are you going to offer that class again? Because now that you kind of, you know, did this, yeah. we were kind of your, maybe your guinea pigs. Is that yeah. going to be an offering that you have now? Yeah. And for anyone out there who's being an entrepreneur, I will be total, totally transparent. I had this download during an energy work session that I was supposed to gift the program to 100 people. That was absolutely a gift to the universe and an energetic contribution. It was also very strategically a way for me to get dozens of testimonials all at once for a program that didn't exist before. So I just got tons of social proof. I got tons of snapshots from social media that say, I had a money miracle. This is what happened. Oh my God. And now, yeah, I'm absolutely running it live again. And it will stay, I will say it won't be free again, but it will stay affordable. So for anybody who wants to check, April will have your own link to go check it out. So you guys can see whatever it is now. I don't know when this podcast will be airing, but I'm going to be releasing it again in August, 2021. And I'm sure within a couple months after that, I'll run it live again. Because it's so fun to run live. I mean, I have been teaching the marketing side and adding in the magic and energetics of marketing, like over the years, slowly making it more on the magic side and people are loving that. And to now have a program that really is just magic and not really teaching the marketing side at all. It's for everyone. This isn't just for entrepreneurs. Peace with money is something that everyone can have and attain and tap into and become. Yeah, it's so fun. I'm definitely going to be running it live probably a few more. Times. Yeah. And there were a bunch of different people in the class. You know, every time we did some breakout rooms and sharing, sometimes I was in a breakout room with other, you know, entrepreneurs. Some people were moms. Some people were just like trying to like heal their relationship with money. You know, it wasn't about business. So it was, it was really great. It was a nice community. And again, I can't, you know, express enough how great of a teacher Molly is. So, you know, she holds you accountable. She's just, it's structured, it's nice. And you feel like, I mean, even though I got it for free, like if you're paying for it, you're really going to feel like you're going to get your money's worth because I think you do a really good job of just, you know, showing up to the people that you're teaching and giving quality stuff, you know? And I guess I realized just because I haven't really been a student um, in quite a while, it, it was a really good experience to kind of maybe have not so great experiences to also look at my teaching skills, like, okay, what doesn't feel right? What am I really good at? You know, what do I see in another teacher that is like, oh, I want to replicate that. So it was really helpful to be a student and see what really good teaching looks like and what really bad teaching looks like to even, you know, hone in my skills a little bit better. But, you know, just the the content and the quality of your stuff is is excellent. And you, you come very highly recommended from me. So, and I know when I say that, that my listeners are going to check you out. If you guys go to Molly's website, if you book a session with her, if you take a class, please let her know that you found her from us because that's always great to get that feedback, to know that you guys are listening and really participating in what we're trying to teach here and put out. So Molly, can you just let people know like what your Instagram handle is? Cause you have so many fun pictures on there, your website and uh, anything else that you'd like to share. Yeah, definitely. Wild underscore one O-N-E underscore rising. That's my Instagram. And that's where I put my daily almost daily pep talks and pics of my travels. And that's where you'll find out if I'm doing any workshops or events or stuff like that. And then on Facebook, you can follow Wild Hearts Rise Up. Reveal the Game of Life is my other podcast. Also on Facebook, there's a Facebook group or page. And yeah, wildheartsriseup.com is my website. Uh, again, we'll get a special link for April. Maybe we'll give people a little discount on Peace With Money if they're listening to this episode with you. But yeah, those are the main places to follow me. And I try to give some insights on just like living a happy, joyful life in addition to running a dope business that allows you more freedom. But I'm super grateful for being here and for everyone listening. Don't give up this dream. I feel like I'm living a dream life sometimes and that happened on purpose by design. 
not by accident. It took action and it took trying things out that weren't quite it in order to find what was it for me. And that's just what it is right now. It might keep changing. Who knows? But definitely don't give up on finding the thing that lights you up and living a life that is fulfilling. Awesome. Molly, you're a rock star in my eyes. <laughs> you're an inspiration. And it was just really wonderful to have your energy here on the Path Loving Podcast. I'm honored to have been a student of yours, hoping to consult with you further in the future and get some tips. And I just really love having you here. And if you ever come back to the East Coast in New York, you have a home. I'm by a lake. Okay, you could park your van and I've got cats and dogs and all that stuff. So definitely hit me up if you're on the East Coast coming through New York. I, you always have a place to stay with me. I will for sure. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Check Molly out. We'll have all the links in the show notes. Take care, everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in to today's show. If you haven't already, please subscribe and rate and review the Path 11 podcast in Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Also, this podcast is made possible by our sponsor, Path 11 TV. Visit path11tv.com to start a seven-day free trial and start streaming over 100 hours of exclusive video content on consciousness, healing, and life after death. That's path11tv.com and be sure to use coupon code podcast30 to take 30% off your annual membership. Start satisfying your spiritual curiosity with a membership to Path 11 TV today. Bye for now.